Proverbs chapter number 25. Getting there. Somewhere. These are the Proverbs of Solomon. Then the Proverbs of Solomon. Which the men of Hezekiah of Judah copied out. So we're continuing with the Proverbs of Solomon. These are Solomon's Proverbs up to chapter 29, I believe. But they have been copied. We don't have the originals. They have been copied. That's what it says. They got a hold of Solomon's writings and they wrote down. Now, we're not told are they in any Pacific order or just told we're co they're copied and the Holy Spirit inspired the copies of the original copy. From 25 on. I mean, there may have been some things that they didn't copy. They may have copied out of order. I don't know. So, that's how we start off chapter 25. Chapters 1 through 24 have been what Solomon wrote directly. Now we go from what was copied. And it's, it's continuation of warnings and instructions to us. It stays with the flow. It is, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. There are th mysteries that are hidden for God's glory. You go back into your little time machine to Jeremiah and say, Jeremiah, tell me about the church age. And he'll sit there scratching your head, well, what's the church age? You go back to, to the Apostle John and say, John, tell me about this Roman Catholic Church system that we have in 2014. And he'll sit there scratching his head. But the honor of kings is to search out the matter. Revelation 1 calls Christians kings and priests. Paul says, Study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word. So you'll find in Proverbs a copy that's not of the original telling you that God shows you mysteries and you're to go find them out. You are to study the word and you're to rightly divide the word. And kings are supposed to do it. So let me ask you a question. The New International, is, 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 is that written by a king? American state, America hasn't had a king never. We rebelled against the king. Yes, that's a rebellion Bible. The King James 1611 Bible is a Bible that's written by God. With God's authority put into the English of uh, for the English, the heaven for height, the earth for depth, and the heart of King is unsearchable. Jeremiah seventeen nine and ten. You don't understand. You know, America, they hate Obama. You don't know what his heart is, and you don't know what God's doing through President Obama. What if what you hate about President Obama is just setting up the system for a rapture to happen very soon? Well, we need to impeach Obama. And what if you impeach him and you stalled the rapture for 20, 25, 30, 40, 50 years? Let God do what he's doing, and you just do what God told you to do. Go in all the world and preach the gospel, not try to change politics. Okay. 
Take away the draws from silver. That's the garbage that's in silver when you melt it. And there shall come forth a vessel for, for the finer. Finer silver, more pure silver, more expensive. And for the finer, the one that works the silver, pure silver. Every time you get, every time you heat it up and get that junk out of there. Ahab's draws, as far as we're talking about kings, was Jezebel. Take away the wicked from before the king. And his throne shall be established in righteousness. So what you want to do is you want to put a Christian in the White House. And you want to throw silver into dross. Because Washington, D.C. in politics is the dross. And you want to take the fine vessel of God and throw it into the mess. You want to do the complete opposite. It's what the Bible says. Ahab would have done good if, if the Jezebel would have been removed. His sins wouldn't have been as bad. Maybe God would be able to work through him. But she had, you know, her, her was 500 prophets that sat around her table. Naboth was killed because of Jezebel. All Ahab did was went to bed and cried against the wall, sucking his thumb and peeing his pants. I guarantee you there's some politicians out there that are in office that do exactly that. No, I don't have any in mind as of yet. Put not forth thyself in the presence of a king. Now that, you got to read that and read it and read it. It's to invite yourself. Now we've had in the last couple months, we've had a lot of people invite themselves up to the, to the White House by jumping the wall. That's a no-no. You don't go walk up to the President of the United States without getting yourself in trouble. Even Esther told her her, her uncle there, uh, Mordecai, if the king doesn't hold out his golden scepter, I have not been invited. And if he hold, if he does not hold out that, that golden scepter, off with your head. You had to be an invitation. You had to be either an office of him. Nehemiah was the cupbearer. That's why he could go before the king. So put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. It's the pride of self. Look who I am. I can. For better it is that it be said unto thee, and you find this in Luke 14, 8 through 10. Come up hither. Well, that's an interesting expression there. Then, th then that thou shouldst be put low in the presence of the prince, whom thy eyes have seen. And, you know, it's picture a guy. He, here's a marriage, and all the little tables with the families and friends. Up at the head table, there's the the, the bride and the groom. Her side, the matron on it, all the way down to the flower girl. His side, the best man, all the way down to the ring bearer. And the best man is going to get up, is about to get up and make the toast to the couple. And somebody comes walking all up there. Hey, pay attention to me because I am wonderful. No, 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 buddy. Your seat is way down there. 
See that empty chair way down there? That's where you belong. But I gave him a job. I bought the hard way for that. Or whatever. No. It's their time. See, there are people who think I know much better than the pastor. I should rule your house. They're, they're advice givers when you don't ask them for advice. They're the ones that work there. You know, the company wouldn't function without me. I got the way to do it. You don't. And who are you? Listen, when it comes to the store I work for, if I were to lose my job or lose my life today, I'm supposed to go to work tonight, the company is not going to fail because I die. Now, if you were to take away if all the grocery personnel walked out, then the company's in trouble. See, there's a big difference between one person being the whole mass or the whole mass being together. And you just don't go barging yourself into the high office. You go through ranks, your senators, your representatives. You go through the governor's office before you go to the president's office. And then you got to come up hither. For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither. Oh, you better believe Revelation chapter 4 when you hear come up hither. That would be better of all things. It would be better to be better. When I hear the Lord Jesus Christ say, come up hither. And I meet in the clouds all the Christians that are Christians. And then we go up to meet the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And get this, put forth thyself, uh, wait a minute, for his better, verse 6, put not, thy, put not forth thyself in the presence of the king. Um, we're talking about the rapture in verse 7. It would be a good verse to say, not, really not to commit suicide. I may be stretching that. But if you kill yourself before your time, you know, I know God knows everything. Don't invite yourself before King Jesus by taking your own life or being something stupid. I died for Christ. And it's like, no, you didn't. You died a stupid death. You'll get a stupid reward. Nothing. And stand not in the place of great men. Don't put yourself with, with martyrs. If you die a stupid death in the name of Christ. If there are riots in L.A., if there are riots in Missouri, if there are riots in San Diego or, or wherever... That is not the time to go down with the gospel and start preaching on the street. Just back off. And don't be there. Don't go to Ferguson, Missouri tonight and say, I'm going to preach the gospel to all the people on that road there and then get clobbered with a beer bottle. Or the police shoot tear gas and it accidentally hits you in the head and knocks you out dead. 
You don't belong there. Great men would be men who prayed about where they're supposed to be. Now, if I go down every other Saturday like I do at the farmer's market, and then a Muslim comes along, he, he figures out my schedule, he knows when I'm going to be there, and comes along and purposely loads a gun or a sword, whatever he's got, and kill, okay, I'm going to die a martyr's death. You can put my name with the men who died for Christ. You know, don't go over Jerusalem and strap on dynamite on your stomach and walk up to the to that dome of the rock and try to blow it up and then wonder why you're sitting in jail because you were caught. You set off all the detectors. I'm persecuted for being a Christian. No, you're persecuted for being a dummy. First of all, our, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Take the dynamite off. Okay? See? You can die stupid. You can go to jail stupid for Jesus. As I found that quick, because now we go to the next part. For better it is that it be... It, these, these wordings are really weird. Or it's me. For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither. Hey, just wait out the rapture. Jesus says, if he persecutes you in one city, pick up and go to another city. Don't ask for persecution. Then that thou shouldst be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thy eyes have seen. Again, it's, it's humility. Humble yourself. You don't deserve the top seat. Don't go be a governor. Don't go be a president. Don't go be a... Don't be shooting for the pastor of the church. We are, there's already a pastor in the church. Now, if you want to go start a church... Go not for hastily... To strive. I found my note here. I got Second Chronicles thirty-five, eight to twenty-five for hastily. Least thou know not what to do in the end thereof. When thy neighbor shall put thee to shame. Don't go jumping into something and you have no idea what you're jumping into and what you're getting into. You got to look at it. You got to be diligent about it. You got to study it. You got to look at the all options. You got to look at the councils. And you get to wherever you want to be and here you are and then you never... That guy doesn't know anything of what he's doing. I mean, there are people who, who put a name in their life, and they don't look at the consequences. You know, career. There are people today where he has given her a ring and, and proposed marriage, and they have no idea. They'll be sitting in, in, a, in a minister's office talking about the vows and all that, and they have no idea what unto death do his part. They don't know what sickness and poor is all about.
They don't know what it means. Oh, I'm going to pursue this career. And what time robs from you? What will happen if the economy shifts? How many people jumped into the real estate market when the real estate was selling all that? I'm going to be a real estate agent and all that. And then, boom, the market collapsed. You got to look at the what ifs. But people don't want to look at the, they don't want to look at failure. There are people I know that are in construction, I guarantee they save money while they're doing work because they know when the job is over, there will be no work for a while. The guy was talking to me the other night, he said, well, he was thinking about maybe going to construction. He said, well, when the job is finished and there's no work until I, yeah, yes. That guy was thinking straight. I didn't, you know, say, you know, you shouldn't go. I'm glad you're thinking that. You, you know, you're looking at something and you're looking at the, the negative part of it, too. Yeah, I'm making all kinds of money. I'm doing construction. Yeah, spend, 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 spend. Uh, and look, it's done. All right, we got a new shopping center. And you come back to work Monday. We don't need you no more. Well, we don't need you. We're done. Well, I didn't say no. I spent, 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 spent. That's how much you pay me for unemployment? Man, I got a car payment. I got a house payment. I got uh, Visa, MasterCard payments. Yeah, see, you didn't think. Debate. Oh, people love that word. Put a period after that one. Debate. Oh, oh, you mean there's rest? Oh, shoot, I thought that was a, I thought there was a period there. The Bible says Proverbs 25, 9. Debate! <laughs> I like that. Uh, no, and that's not all it says. See, there are some people who want a chapter and verse that has one word. They would love some words say the Bible sleep. They don't like persecution. They don't like the patient word. And debate. Uh, I got a note here. Matthew 5, 25 and 18, 15. Thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Oh. You mean that debate that I, I like there with the period? It means I don't go and, and the people in front of me in church say, did you see? You know what that guy's doing to me? You don't go over and, and there's a huddle of people over there at the water fountain. Hey, you know what this guy's doing to me? You don't Facebook it. You don't text it. You don't. It says debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another. Colon. Not a period. You got a problem with somebody in church, you go to that person in the church. And that's exactly what Jesus said. There's a step of orders before you go right to the you running to the church. It's a three step series. The first step, which is always avoided, is you go to the person himself. I try to just let it let time heal. But if that doesn't do it, then you can pull the person off and say, hey, you know, whatever it is, whether you did something to them or you think they've done something to you, it's not to be put in the church bulletin. Well, I wouldn't do that. When you open up your big mouth to everybody, it's in the church bulletin. It's just not printed. It's the, the Baptist Oral bulletin of the church. It's never written down except for what God writes down. Matthew 12, you shall be uh, judged by every idle word. Uh, oh. And discover not a secret to another. Now I think that secret 
is not a secret. I don't think it's that kind of secret. I think it's the fact that you and somebody else has a problem, and it does not to be no one else's revelation. Jesus says, unless he won't listen to you, then you take someone else with you. As a witness. But you first got to go to the person. Least he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thy infamy turn not away. You think you've got a problem with somebody, and you go talking around, and this guy, he gets finally gets a hold of it and say, wait a minute. This is the story, and I'm here are my witnesses, and then, you, and then you're put down to shame. You go to the person, wherever it is, X, Y, Z. No, 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 no. And remember brother or sister such and such? Okay. Stop right here. You go get brother such and such. All right. And you, and you say, oh, we got this problem between us. And we, we think you were a witness to this. And then you find out, okay, somebody was wrong. Somebody was right. You bypass those two steps, and this guy will come up and say, uh, Brother, sister, come here. Did you hear me say this? No, you didn't say that. This guy's over here telling everybody in the church, I said this. Oh, no, you, you did not. Now you're in infamy. Where had you gone to that brother and say, Brother, why did you say that about me? I didn't say nothing. Well, uh, yeah. let's call Sister J Jana. Okay, Sister Jan, come to the car. Sister Jan, you heard him. No, I didn't hear him say that. This is what he said. Oh, okay, I, I was mistaken. I am sorry, brother. I, I thought, you see what I mean? And then the problem starts right there. No one else knows about it. And God checks off his book. And he did right, and the situation solved. And even if you go to everybody in the church and tell your gossip and your secrets and your story and it's wrong, all right, you two finally get it worked out. You're pointing at me. It's still going to be traveled around the church in the, in the hot telephone potato line. You say, what's the hot telephone potato line? You, you take a rumor and a secret and all that, like a hot potato, and you hold it in your hands, you got to get rid of it. So, we move on. Come on. I'm having technical difficulties here as I lost my mouse. We'll come back in a minute. Get Rachel over here. She's just sitting over there. We're on the floor somewhere. We're having technical difficulties. All right, we're recording. We got our mouse back here. Okay. We're flying off the table. The mouse got away. Need a cat. All right, we're at number. First number. Eleven. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. Now. I'm going to tell you something. I have no idea what this verse is talking about. A word fitly, right time, right thing, is as apples of gold. I don't eat gold apples. Unless they're golden delicious apples, I don't know them. In pictures of silver. Apple juice in pictures of silver. An artist painting. He got me there. <laughs> Either a picture that looks good or apple juice. 
but it's right words at the right time and the right thing so as an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold Isaiah 50 verse 4 so is a wise reprover what's wrong and what's right upon the obedient ear apples of gold pictures of silver earring of gold ornament of fine gold it's costly valuable thing so it can't be I don't think it cannot be apple juice it looks like a vessel of silver with artificial apples on it now what that has to do with words fitly spoken or uh, a reprover with obedient ear is it's very valuable now you take artificial fruit and I got to admit to you I was I was scolded by my grandmother one day as a little boy in her kitchen because I was eating the plastic grapes off her fruit decoration yes I did that <laughs> and no they did not have flavor and no they didn't do my body any good probably do me more better eat that today than the food that's in the market but fitly spoken <clears throat> A wise reprover, apples of gold, earrings of gold, and an ornament of gold. You got to think about it. Can you imagine? your spouse dying and I've, I've gone through this my spouse died I had two children and almost immediately I talked about remarriage and I was rebuked by people who had no idea what was what was in my thoughts what was my ideas who had never gone through the situation I had just gone through right now. I am not going was not going to sell my children to the government and hand them over to the public school system. All right, I'm going to go to work, but I, there's no one to take care of the kids while I was at work. I had a daughter I don't know about women I don't know about women things I don't know anything about a female those were the primary things I was thinking of you go to somebody who's been diagnosed with cancer Oh, brother, I know what you're going through. No, you don't. Unless you got it. I know a brother in the church, cancer and, and radiation. Now, I personally did not go through that. But I've been through it. And what's the best thing? Run down to that guy and give him my advice? No, pray for him. Pray for what I do know and how I how I've seen how uncomfortable it is, even how quick it is for the for the for the radiation in that that moment. But you know the table and stuff like that. And for the person's spouse, where you know I, I've been there, I, I've been through that. I. 
I have been with radiation treatment, and Rachel was there with me, my daughter, the first day. And they had a little little waiting room. Nobody there but the, but the, but us, the people behind the desk. We got the radiation table all set up ready. We go into the the little waiting room there. No one there. We got down on our knees to pray. An entire hospital staff came in and rebuked us. You don't need that in that time. At that moment. A person who has just found out trouble in his life does not need you to come up. Especially if you don't know. You have not been through it. You go off in your prayer closet and you pray to them. You keep your big mouth shut. You know, the apples of gold and pictures of silver, you don't really pay attention to that. Matter of fact, some people may look at it like that. You know, if it's on, why are those apples gold? Oh, well. Keep on walking. The earring of gold, not many people, unless you've got big hula hoops hanging off your ears. They probably won't even get that close enough to you to even see you're wearing an earring. And the ornament of fine gold, or you, you may have something you're wearing. It may be the best, finest gold. It may be unnoticeable to people. You know what I'm trying to say? If you go through the same thing with the person, that they've gone through. That will be valuable to help and pray with them. Then somebody comes up, oh, I know what you're going through with stupid words. Because they might come to you and say, well, hey, I've developed this problem. I'm going through this problem. Can you help me? I don't know. Well, wait a minute. You said, well, I was lying to you. Just trying to comfort you. Now you got false security. False security ain't worth anything. Whereas if you know somebody who's going through the situation you're going through, and they come to you and say, hey, I, something has just happened even more. Well, let's sit down and let me... Tell you what happened. And it may not be the same thing, but you know what? Your words are going to be more secure and an aid to him. The little thing of value can be the most value in someone's life when it's done right. It says over there, if you desire the office of a bishop, you desire a good thing. you got to be a husband of one wife. But I guess the Bible says that you need to go to the world and preach the gospel. I'll give you three points of the gospel tonight in this message. Well, amen. Let me hear an amen. Yes, pastor. Yes. Can my wife and I talk to you? Sure, come on in my office. My wife and I are having this problem. What if that pastor is not married? How is he going to be valuable? How can he give advice to someone who is married when he has not gone through the troubles and problems of marriage? Oh, Pastor, my son, I just don't understand. Oh, I read the, I read this guy's book on raising children. And what about your children? I don't have any. 
What about that guy's children? Is the book you read? I don't really know. You know? I mean, that's like asking the guy to say, you know, something wrong with my tire of my car. I don't understand. Do you know about it? Well, yeah. It's round. Okay. And you talk to a guy, you know, when his, when his gas gauge gets down to a quarter, he sells the car and buys a brand new one. That's not the guy you go ask about the problems with the car. You go to a guy who pops open the hood of the car and say, yep, that's the trouble with an engine. And no, that's not the guy you ask about questions in your car. You ask somebody who, who works and tinkers with cars or maybe even has a job dealing with cars. He'd be more valuable than somebody who tells you do it do it the wrong way and destroys whatever the work there is of. And you gotta rebuild again. And there are deceivers out there who will give you wrong advice. So what we've looked at so far is we've got we've got a king's heart that is to study out God. We are kings and priests. We are to make our lives to take the dross out, to get the junk, get the sin out of our life. We are to take the wicked away from our life. Those who do not want to serve the Lord. Those who do not want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to separate yourself. You got to say bye. You got to step away from politics. You got to step away from great men. They may be great men. But are their names written down in the, book, the last book of life? You got to humble yourself. You can't be hasty. You've got a problem. You've got to go to the person themselves. And you got to use choice words. And you can't lie to people. You can't say you've gone through something or I know what you're going through. Those are the deadliest words. And you will be held accountable, according to this text, as a false witness, as a liar. And that person will never trust your character again. See, there are people so quick to run in before the king or before the person that has the problem. I am Superman. I have all the answers. Shut up and pray and leave the person alone. And if they come to you, be perfectly honest with them. That's what it comes down to.